Hey, y'all. Welcome to the Book Marketing Mania podcast. I'm your host, Kim Stewart, and I'm so glad you're tuning in today. As you start thinking about your book marketing strategies for 2022, be sure to include speaking as one of them. There's nothing like your ideal readers being able to hear and see your voice and your personality and make that instant connection with you. You know, we used to think of speaking as only getting up on a stage in front of our target readers at an in-person event, but now with technology, we get to also speak directly to our readers on podcasts and social media videos. And on this episode, I'm rounding up what some of my past amazing guests have shared about how speaking helps you market your books. They're sharing about speaking at in-person events, hosting your own podcast, guesting on other podcasts, and speaking live with your ideal readers on social media. So let's get to it. On episode 18, I interviewed Barb Bruce, who's a nonfiction author and publishing agent at Books and Such, and she talks about how important a speaking platform is to a potential publisher, and this is what she had to share. Then another part of the marketing piece is I'm going to be looking and asking about a speaking platform Mm -hmm. because that is one of the primary drivers outside of mailing list to selling books. So nonfiction authors, if you want to write either in Christian living or academia or discipleship, you're going to be asked whether or not you've got a speaking platform. This is the space we're going to ask you about, hey, how do you connect with people? If you're nonfiction, that's where I want you to tell me about your speaking platform or your podcast or your YouTube channel. We want to find great ideas. I'm so thankful that she made that connection to why they're asking those questions. And it's all about you being able to show how you're connecting to your target readers. And then in episode nine, I interviewed Misty Phillip, host of the By His Grace podcast and founder of the Spark Media Podcasting Conference. And she shared this little tidbit that she had heard from her own agent. I also know on the flip side of that and working with my agent that the people she's talking to the publishing houses are looking for people who have podcasts because they know other podcasters and podcasting is one of the best ways to get your message out today. And if you have any questions about meeting with a publisher or agent at your next writing or podcasting conference, be sure to tune in to episode 18 as Barb shares what publishers are looking for in a proposal and how to prepare for that scary 15 minute publisher or agent meeting. You want to make the most of the time you have, right? And we'd love for you to join us at the Spark Christian Podcasting Conference in Nashville in March. Publishing agent Blythe Daniel will be there meeting with potential authors. So now, y'all, let's talk about podcasting, both hosting and guesting. The speaking strategy of podcasting has taken on a life of its own. Am I right? This past year and a half that we've been in a pandemic. And as I mentioned, I interviewed Misty Phillip in episode nine to talk about how podcasting helps you market your book. And I asked her how hosting the By His Grace podcast has helped her launch and market her Bible study, as well as build her audience for the next book that she's writing. And here's what she had to share. I think writing, speaking, and podcasting is a trifecta, that a podcast is a really great place for you to hone your voice and to get people who are interested in that topic to start to have dialogue with them. So once you're putting those episodes out and then through social media, you can continue that conversation and you can see if your topic is resonating with people. So I think for an author who is sharing their book on a podcast, you have a long run with the podcast. So it's not just like during the launch period, because we all know that launching a book is both a sprint and a marathon, right? You sprint Mm -hmm. up to that launch date. And then once you launch it, then you have to go into that marathon mode. And I think the beauty of podcasting is as that podcast grows um, and as you reshare the episode, more people can discover it. And then therefore, more people will will know about your message and about your book. 
I love that she calls writing, speaking, and podcasting a trifecta that we should all be implementing in our book marketing strategies. And if that doesn't get you excited enough about the potential of sharing your message with your target readers through podcasting, here's a little something else to think about. On episode 19, I interviewed Crystal Profit, author of Start a Benchworthy Podcast. She's a podcasting coach and host of the Profit Podcast, and she shared this for fellow authors. There's nothing like a podcast to feel the intimacy of knowing that person. And so for anybody that's listening and you're thinking about, you know, okay, I want to write this book and I want it to be for this specific audience. A podcast can 100% lay the foundation for the stories that you would tell in a book or for, for you to have the ability to elaborate in places where You just feel like, oh my gosh, if I keep talking about this, I'm going to go on for five or six chapters and it just needs Mm -hmm. to be one chapter and I don't have enough time. Well, that's where you can share more of those stories on a podcast and you can grow really the authority in your field, especially for you um, nonfiction writers that are in a specific space where you want to stand out as the go-to expert. I think that a podcast can just help you just help you achieve that in so many ways. Oh, gosh, I love everything about repurposing content, and hopefully that might stir some ideas for you to podcast your next book. Plus, on episode 17, I interviewed Katie Reed, author of Made Like Martha and co-host of the popular Martha and Mary show podcast, and she shared how hosting a podcast has helped her continue to market her book even several years later. When you are going to launch a book or even when you just sign the book deal, It is, you're signing up for a marathon, but each step of the way could feel like its own marathon. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. Just when you get one thing done, there's something else coming. And it's also like a marriage or like birthing a child that then needs to grow up. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really understand that when I first launched Martha, I had my plan for like the first month. And then it was like, oh, this needs to keep going. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so that's part of the reason that Lee and I launched the Martha and Mary show. For one, we just have that kind of friendship. She's more like Mary. I'm more like Martha. Um, But we knew it'd be a natural way to keep talking about the book without always talking about the book, if that Mm -hmm. makes sense. You know, it's in the title, but there's this whole, you know, community surrounding the topic. If you want to learn more about hosting your own podcast to market your book, be sure to check out episode nine with Misty and episode 17 with Katie. And if you're podcasting or starting one soon and also have a book to write, be sure to check out episode 19 with Crystal Prophet as we talk about turning your podcast into a book. Okay, y'all, so now let's talk about guesting. As podcasts explode, so does guesting. Speaking to your ideal readers by guesting on a podcast is not only a great way to share your book with new audiences, but it's also the number one way to grow your own podcast that you're using as a speaking platform. On episode three, I shared nine ways guesting on podcasts can help you build your author platform. And here's a little snippet from that episode. Your podcast host is your event coordinator. They've done all the hard work for you. They've been called to a unique mission to serve their listeners. They've created a regular event to encourage and inspire their listeners on a consistent basis. And guess what? Those listeners are likely your target book readers. Podcast hosts have done all the hard work for you. They've built a loyal community of listeners Listeners who show up week in and week out. Listeners who are engaged. Listeners who trust their host to bring them conversations that bring value to their busy days. And as event coordinators, what do podcast hosts need? Speakers. (laughs) Speakers they can trust to bring value to their listeners. Speakers with a message that matches the mission of their show. And in most cases, the podcast is recorded. It's not live. So if you have stage fright, no worries. It's not a live audience. Thank God for that. It's just a conversation between two people, yourself and the podcast host. But that conversation has the potential to serve many. The podcast listeners who show up week in and week out and new listeners that discover the show weeks, months, or sometimes years after your guest episode goes live. New listeners equal new readers. 
And while I was interviewing Misty Phillip on episode nine, I also asked her about the impact guesting on podcast has had on her book marketing strategies as she's been a guest on many shows the past few years. Here's what she had to say. Yeah, I think that's one of the best ways actually to grow your platform because basically you're borrowing platform when you do that. I don't know if people have heard that term borrowing platform, but basically you're being introduced to a whole new audience and you have the ability to share about your book. And again, we'd love to see you at the Spark Christian Podcasting Conference in Nashville in March. You'll learn all about hosting, guesting, marketing, and monetizing your podcast. Okay, now I know when we hear of speaking, we all typically think of in-person speaking events, but holy cow, have those changed over the past year and a half? And that's why I wanted to talk about podcasting first, but things seem to be looking up right now, and I wanted to share some strategies on how speaking at in-person events helps you market your book. On episode six, I interviewed Kathy Green, author and publishing consultant, and she had this to share about speaking engagements. What I have found to be my most advantageous um, way to market my message is when I speak in front of audiences. And Kim, I tell you, I'm by nature, I'm more of an introvert and more a little bit shy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But when I, you know, released the first book, I said, oh my gosh, God is really pushing me out there. I don't want to. I want to stay hidden behind my desk and just write, write, write. But we're writing for a purpose. We're writing so that that message can reach the audience. And so when doors began to open up for me to speak, it was to my surprise when I would finish speaking, I would look out at my book table and there was a line waiting for me. And this is something that has just happened for me every time I speak. It's because the message that I'm teaching or speaking on is reaching into the hearts of those listening. And then they want to take that book. It's like taking a part of you home with them. They want more of what you shared. And so speaking in front of audiences, whether it's on a podcast like this today or a television interview or a radio interview or speaking live at a women's event or even in a small group, which I do small group Bible studies, that's when the books just fly. It's like they have wings and they go. Tune into episode six as Kathy was my first What's Working Now interview to hear what she's doing to reach new readers. Plus, she's a great resource if you need to talk through the traditional versus self-publishing routes. Then on episode 12, I interviewed author Sarah Geringer, and she shared some unique things she's done with her launch teams. And she also had this to say about in-person speaking events. And one of the main benefits of self-publishing is when you go speak with a group, which is another area that all authors need to expand in. Um, it's, It's kind of a requirement now, not just something to consider. Uh, because the age that we are going into is highly video based, and there's going to be more and more demand for um, qualified speakers. So the sooner that you can get comfortable with that, the better. So if you're speaking in person and someone likes you, they want to quote take a piece of you home with them, and the best thing is a self-published book. And they're relatively easy and quick to produce if you work with a team of people that can help you. Sarah shared so much wisdom on episode 12. Plus, she's adding on a service of helping authors with their launch team. So be sure to check out her services if you're needing help in 2022. Then I had mentioned I interviewed author Katie Reed on episode 17. And later in that interview, she shared this about speaking at in-person events. I also have like audiobook copies mm-hmm. of my book because some people come back from a, re- a retreat and like, I'm not really a reader, but I can pop this in and listen to this on the way home. That also reminded me of something that Blythe Daniel, publishing agent, shared at the Spark 2021 Christian Podcasting Conference. She was talking about authors being interviewed on podcasts and said, be sure to mention if you have an audiobook because podcast listeners are likely going to prefer listening to reading and likely going to buy your audiobook. Okay, so last but not least, I also wanted to talk about speaking to your ideal readers on live video. Like podcasting, live video has taken on a life of its own this past year and a half as you're able to schedule events ahead of time to let your followers know when you'll go live. And with the replays saved afterwards, your target readers never miss a thing. And how fun is it to get to speak to your favorite authors as if you were at an in-person event with them? 
I interviewed my favorite accountability coach, Krista Hutchins, on episode two about prioritizing your marketing plans. And after our recording stopped, I asked her what strategy had been most effective for her to market her book, and she had this to share. So I'm a big fan of Instagram live interviews. It's one of my favorite things to do and my favorite way to connect with new new people. So when you do a, a live interview with someone on Instagram, they will invite your audience and their audience to um, to listen to you. Instagram will send the notification. So um, that's a great way to get new people. So whether you um, interview someone about your book, you know, someone who's read it and you want to hear from them what their best takeaways were from it, or maybe you interview another author and you guys both talk about your books um, and share about them. That's a great way to get in front of new people. And it was so cool because right after I interviewed Krista, I interviewed our Instagram coach, Ruthie Gray, for episode four and asked if she could think of any authors doing a great job of marketing their book on Instagram. And one example she shared was this. Someone I know who does this really well, a friend of mine is Krista Hutchins as Mm -hmm. well. She's very good at reaching out to other entrepreneurs and doing things with them like that, like lives. During COVID, she did lunch break lives and reached out to all kinds of people. Some of them she didn't even really know that well, and it helped her grow her audience. And then Krista came out with a line a day journal last year, and that thing exceeded her goals. That's so cool. So if you want to learn more about how you can market your book on Instagram, especially in a very authentic way, as you build relationships with your target readers, be sure to check out episode four with Ruthie. Oh, y'all, I hope this was helpful to hear some of my amazing guests about how speaking can help you market your books. There's so much potential in marketing your books at in-person events, hosting your own podcast, guesting on other podcasts, and speaking to your ideal readers live on social media. And don't forget to maximize all those opportunities and repurpose that content as much as possible for each of the different platforms you're on. If you want to learn more about what each of my guests shared about book marketing on their own episodes, I will link them in the show notes. And if you're listening live, next week's Christmas, and I wish you and your families a very blessed time of celebrating the birth of Jesus and truly remembering the reason for this season. Thanks for tuning in today, and I'll see you next week as I cheer you on to market your book one podcast at a time. 